listening. Breakthrough yeah. Media. The truth always wins out in the end because it outlives falsehood. Yeah. Uh. Uh. I'm the one that does the preaching here for those who care to listen. Now, if there's anything that I can do. Well, there's one thing you can do. Tell me why nobody around here will listen to me. Well, if you want people to listen, you've got to tell them what they want to hear. I told them the truth. That's the last thing that most people want to hear. It's time for you to stand on the truth. Time for you to stand for what you know, what you've been researching. And the passion that comes out of B. Tatum comes from the truth. All I do is speak the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, so help me God. Did New York State put COVID-19 infected patients into nursing homes? It sounds too crazy to believe, but let's look. ABC7 Coronavirus News, New York Governor Cuomo criticized over highest nursing home death toll. From the article, they are second guessing a state directive that requires nursing homes to take on new patients infected with COVID-19. In order, they say accelerated outbreaks in facilities that are prime breeding grounds for infectious diseases. I mean, you think? The way this has been handled by the state is totally irresponsible, negligent, and stupid, said Elaine Mazota, a nurse whose mother died last month of suspected COVID-19 at a Long Island nursing home. They knew better, they shouldn't have sent these people into nursing homes. Why were they sending COVID-19 infected patients into nursing homes? If this was Donald Trump or a Republican, it would be all over the news every single day for the next month. But because it's beloved Governor Cuomo, they just brush over it. Let's also keep in mind that New York State has the most coronavirus deaths and patients by far. And they had a directive to put infected COVID-19 people into nursing homes who we know are the most at risk of dying and getting infected. It's absolutely insane, disgusting, and ridiculous, but partisan politics will ensure that people just won't seem to care about this. It was also crazy when New York Times broke a few weeks ago. New York City's coronavirus death toll soared past 10,000 after officials added more than 3,700 people who had never tested positive for the virus but were presumed to have died of it. So now they're adding people who never got tested. They also found out that 66% of the new hospitalizations were actually sheltering in place and staying indoors. There's not this massive catastrophic essential worker influx in New York. It's actually the opposite. The majority of people stayed at home. Of course, you're not allowed to talk about how the Department of Homeland Security Science and Technology sector did a study and found out that sunlight gets rid of the virus quicker than being indoors. The virus in droplets of sal uh, saliva survives best in indoors and dry conditions. And thirdly, the virus dies the quickest in the presence of direct sunlight under these conditions. Because after that came out, the media just screamed Lysol and everybody ran with it because that's pretty much what people do. They listen to whatever the television and news anchors repeat and repeat and repeat, no matter how true it is or not. You also can't talk about how it's been studied that exercise, sunlight, getting outdoors, and social cohesion is actually much, much healthier for people and it lets people live longer. Don't mention that because you just have to go along with the narrative that staying inside is really helpful. Despite what I just told you that a majority of the people in New York doing so were inside and the geniuses in New York politics and health decided to put COVID-19 infected patients into nursing homes. I was gonna play a clip from JP Sears, his viral video on YouTube, what it's like to believe everything the media tells you, where he talks about real facts and statistics like the antibody tests coming out of multiple places, showing that the mortality rate of the virus is way, 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 way lower than what they originally told us, and the actual spread is way, way, way further, and there's reports of up to 400 people at a meatpacking plant all having coronavirus, but none of them knowing because they show no symptoms and it's that mild. That's all happening, but JP Sears did a perfect satire of it and didn't put it on Facebook because he's so afraid of the censorship on Facebook and he's afraid to probably lose his channel and his money. Listen to a quick bit of him explaining why he didn't put it on Facebook. So yeah, about the viral video, first off, I, I didn't, I, I couldn't put it out here on Facebook or Instagram, just the, the jeopardy my pages would be in of getting completely shut down because of like weird censorship 
one happening for weird reasons. I don't know. They're weird reasons. Uh, it, my accounts would just be in too much jeopardy, so I decided to only put it out on YouTube. And though censorship is happening on YouTube, the consequences are just a little bit less severe. So worst thing that's going to happen on YouTube, hopefully, would be the video gets taken down and I get a strike against my account. They're pressuring and in some ways threatening users to not joke about anything they don't want you to joke about. SNL can say whatever they want, but if you're a content creator and a comedian, people are afraid to even post this stuff. It's nuts. I posted this Italian politician on Twitter and I got the cosign from Elon Musk who said he is right. Listen to what this guy said in Italy. No. Dite anche qui 25.000 morti. Non è vero. Non usate i morti per retoriche e per terrorismo. I dati dell'Istituto Superiore della Sanità dicono che il 96,3% sono morti per altre patologie. Es esattamente i dati, i numeri, i numeri. Dice questo. È la verità. È la verità. Colleghi. Collega Sgarbi, si rivolga. Collega Sgarbi, collega Trizzino, collega Trizzino, collega Sgarbi si rivolga alla presidenza. E mentre in Italia la zona rossa qui tutti erano senza mascherine, oggi Basini è accusato perché la deve portare per forza. Siete ridicoli, non l'avete portata fino all'altro ieri. Ebbene, proprio perché la verità è la cosa più importante, diamo i numeri reali. Non dobbiamo mentire, ci sono certamente dei dati forti. Li leggo anche qua, Trizzino, il 56%. In Lombardia, il 14 in Emilia, l'8 in Piemonte, il 5 in Veneto. Non possiamo immaginare di applicare delle norme unitarie con zone così disparate di epidemia. E allora dico almeno qui, diciamo la verità. Misuriamoci con la Germania, siamo uniti nella liberazione contro l'ipocrisia e le menzogne, contro le falsificazioni, contro i falsi numeri che vengono dati per terrorizzare gli italiani. I 25.000 morti, lo diceva il professor Bassetti, sono morti di infarto, di cancro, di altre persone. Non usiamoli per umiliare l'Italia, non usiamoli per dare ai cittadini false notizie, date i numeri, controllateli e sfido in giurino onore te Trizzino a guardare i numeri. Collega Sgarbi si rivolga alla Presidenza. Ho semplicemente detto che i numeri li danno tutti ma non dirono numeri falsi, non sono morte in Italia 25.000 persone di coronavirus, non è vero, è un modo per terrorizzare gli italiani e imporre una dittatura del consenso, è ridicolo. Elon's also suing a part of California because he can't open up his business, and it inspired one politician from California to say, F Elon Musk, despite the fact that he employs tens of thousands of people in their state. That's what they think of you if you disagree and want to save or run your business. I was also going to show you a clip of this viral video, but like JP Sears, I'm guessing that they won't even allow that clip to stand on YouTube. This is how psychotic it's getting. The state of California listed an outdoor activities that they're now allowing, and it's just as ridiculous as you can imagine. They let you know that you're now allowed to watch the sunrise or the sunset, wash the car, walk your dog, volleyball singles, table tennis singles, trail running, trampolining, scootering, not in groups, skateboarding, not in groups, exploring rock pools, cycling. I mean, this is absolutely demeaning. And the whole point that I'm trying to get to and that JP Sears is trying to get to and that Italian politician and Elon Musk, we're not anti-science or anti-math. We're actually pro-science and pro-health. It's the politicians and it's these health experts that are leading our country into a great depression that don't care about the data or facts. They said that the whole reason we were sheltering in place for 15 days to slow the spread and flatten the curve was so we didn't overwhelm hospitals. We never did. They were wrong in New York, they were wrong in California, they massively overshot in Florida and all across the country. Georgia opened up a few weeks ago despite what Trump and the Democrats didn't want him to do. He did it and they're facing lower hospitalizations. So all the reasons that they told us they were going to shut down, 
3.4 mortality rate from the World Health Organization, that's not even remotely close to what it really is. It's much less deadly and it's much further spread. And the symptoms are so mild in most people that they don't even know they have it, like in this meatpacking plant. So the hospitalizations never happened, the mortality rate never happened, those were the two reasons, but they just keep getting crazier and more tyrannical. And then if you decide to be a doctor or a science expert or just a random citizen who believes in the Bill of Rights and the Constitution, well, you're not allowed to anymore because the Bill of Rights and believing in your First Amendment freedom of speech and ability to protest, that's now illegal. You can get arrested for exercising your First Amendment right and you can get kicked off of Facebook and YouTube for exercising or showing your First Amendment right. This is absolutely insane. I understand if you have a perspective, but it's not like this, oh, we're being safe. It's not actually safe. This is a perfect meme someone made. We did it, Patrick. We flattened the curve. Small businesses destroyed, suicide, rights infringed, domestic violence, economic collapse, mass unemployment, substance abuse. That doesn't even count the tens of thousands of nurses who are being laid off, the tens of thousands, if not hundreds of thousands of people who are trying to get elective surgeries. And this doesn't just mean plastic surgery. I'm talking about cancer treatments, really serious consultations have all been canceled and people are afraid to go to the hospital now. So that's why they're laying off tens of thousands of workers. And it does have a health effect to keep people indoors, not exercising, overeating, drinking too much. I'm sure alcohol sales are doing fine, despite the fact that they kill 3 million people worldwide, according to the who. This isn't about health anymore. This isn't even about the two things they told us it was about. They just keep moving the goalposts. And then if you just disagree or say what they said a month ago, all of a sudden you need to be kicked off social media or you're not allowed to have an opinion or you get cursed at by politicians in California. This is crazy. So they're allowed to put COVID-19 infected patients into nursing homes and no one says anything about it, but you're not allowed to protect your bill of rights, your constitution, your small business, your mental health, in many cases, your physical health, your ability to feed your family. That's all now essentially illegal to do on social media or out in public. And to top off the insanity, one Congress member is suggesting HR 6666, COVID-19 testing, reaching, and contacting everyone Trace Act. This local news host in California said it perfectly. Have the goalposts moved? First, Governor Newsom direly predicted 25 million Californians would be infected by May. Then we flattened the curve, the mercy went unused, and hospitals were never overrun, which was the goal. Now we're being told we need 14 days with no deaths or a vaccine. The goalposts move and move and move and move and people just keep watching television and listening to politicians speak and being filled with fear and fear and fear and fear and fear. And like Elon Musk says here, we're essentially stuck in a loop until we get a clarity of real information. You, you, you don't even need to have gotten a COVID diagnosis. Right. You simply need to have had one of yes. many symptoms and then have, have died for some reason and it's COVID. So, so then it, it makes the death count look very high. And then we're, we're, we're then stuck in a bind because it looks like the death count's super high and not going down like it should be. And now, so, so then we, we should keep whatever, you know, uh, keep, 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 you know, the shelter in place stuff there and, and keep people in their home, you know, confine people to their homes. So we need to break out of this. this we're, we're stuck in a loop. Yeah. And I think the way to break out of this loop is to have clarity of information. The best way to destroy the fear is with facts, real science, and real truth. The real evidence, the real data that's coming out, which is Georgia opening to lower hospitalizations, which totally debunks what they said was going to happen. Infectious experts said it wasn't going to, but it did happen. Despite what Trump or Boris Johnson say, Sweden is not doing astronomically worse than them. They're not even doing two times worse when it comes to deaths per capita. Not 10 times, not 100 times, not 1,000 times. And that's not even including herd immunity, which they might hit and probably will hit before us. They've saved freedom, probably a lot of businesses, definitely a lot of freedom for their people. And when it's all said and done, we'll find out in a few months, they may be doing better per capita, but right now they are doing slightly worse, but not even two times worse. And that's a fact. And as politicians, whether it be Trump or Democrats will claim they saved millions upon millions upon millions of lives by doing this to you. But certainly we would have lost a lot more people, Brett, if we would have done, as an example, you call it herd. If we would have done herd. In other words, everything's wonderful. Let's just keep going along. Herd immunity. We would have lost two and a half million people, I think, or a million and a half or two million people. Can they prove it? To be honest, no, they can't, but they'll take credit for it and everybody will just believe them because I guess that's what fear does to people. You know, I'm so scared, so it's the safe route to 
threaten the meat industry, threaten hundreds of millions of people worldwide with a possible famine when you shut industries down, ignore the science of sunlight, immune systems, social cohesion, athletics, jobs, routines, exercises, ignore all that science and just shelter in place for one month, two months, three months, four months, five months as Governor Cuomo shoves COVID-19 infected patients into nursing homes, but... You don't question that. I mean, God forbid you do. You're now an outlaw in the United States of America that was once the land of the free. It's not anymore. And making tyranny, communism, and essentially fascism the status quo, and penalizing, deleting, or arresting anybody that disagrees is not a country that I want to live in, and it's not a country that millions of people want to live in. And the more you learn the real science and the real data that they're whispering as they're screaming the fear and screaming the exaggerations, it actually becomes much easier to not be afraid. And in the long run, I personally believe, with my American right, that we could save many, 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 many more lives by following the actual data and the actual science and saying what we said we're going to do instead of moving the goalposts, ignoring the science, ignoring the data, ignoring hospitalizations and what it's doing to the hospital industry and just screaming science while you're ignoring science. The politicians love to do that. I believe in the science, but the science of what they just said, they completely ignored and moved on to the next political agenda and tyrannical power grab that doesn't have anything to do with science, no matter how much they say the word science. These people are power hungry, and this just scratches the surface of it. Boom. Yeah. Thank you for watching this video. Let me know what you think in the comment section. God bless you, and I'll be back with more videos.